Hey everybody, welcome back. As you can see here, we got some grotty rust. It is not great. A lot of texture, a lot of holes, big holes there. Um, I was trying to work some things out with the paint stripper and try some different methods, and none of them really worked, as you can tell with all the debris on the door. So I just went ahead and did more abrasive. So I'm mostly trying to smooth things out here so that when I go ahead and apply the fixes to the big rust holes, hopefully there's going to be a bondable surface there and we can get some work done. So of course you got to vacuum and clean everything off, use wax and grease remover, and take just about every little speck of debris off. You know, you have to still leave the rust for this um, rust fix stuff to work. And of course, there I am brushing it on. So this stuff is like a milky white, pretty bubbly stuff. And then uh, it converts to like a purple black bruised color. Uh, it's a mess, just like my video making skills here. But uh, yeah, it, it definitely got things figured out and created a nice little barrier. And so when you put this on, you really don't want to um, do too much sanding on things. So after it's all dry, 24 hours, I uh, started using this. Um, it's kind of like a putty, really, with like a two-part putty with a hardener in it. And it's I think it's called Steel Weld, something like that because I didn't want to be inside of that uh, column there with, oh, you can see that big big light spot. Um, I didn't want to be inside that column with the fiberglass matting or anything like that. So I thought I'd give this a try and see how well it worked. And it actually turned out pretty okay. I know it looks like uh, hot garbage, big piles of poop. But then again, with the video quality, you can't really see anything. Um, <laughs> so uh, we just so you know, we did get that light replaced. So it does look a lot better but see it's it's just gray and kind of nasty I think this first round I got good coverage on it but I don't think I let it cured long enough um, so it's I think it kind of shredded a little bit and rolled up kind of like the play-doh does when it's you know not super wet and not all the way dry I guess it just needed a second coat afterwards but as you can see there's no big uh, pinholes of light coming through them um, except for that lower section there, which I'll get to in a little bit. But So while that's, that's all working, I'm over here getting rid of the larger layers of rust with a braided attachment, just like I would normally do, and just getting that taken care of. This front section, it took a lot of abuse. This is right underneath the fender well, and that big gaping hole there, um, that's actually for the air intake that um, brings it into the cabin. and um, you know, gets you a fresh air. And you also have a vent up on the, the front there as well to bring some fresh air in. But um, <laughs> that uh, that hole had like a big long arm that went through to the front of the fender and it just took so much abuse, it, it had to come off. <laughs> so we'll figure something else out with that. So going back to this other side, Looks pretty okay. Um, a lot, <laughs> a lot drier, and a little bit less rusty than it was. But uh, yeah, look at that. See, it's it's pretty hard on the outside, but I think it, right through the middle because I did put it on a little bit thick. I think that just hadn't gotten time to cure. So um, you can tell there at as I'm going over it. You know, maybe I'm pushing a little too hard. Not totally sure, but it's just kind of there's the different colors there you can see in the putty where it's just not cured so that was kind of disappointing but you live and you learn so basically right right here I'm, I'm trying to smooth things out and bring it down to a, a nice level where it's still bonded bonded to the steel of course I'm not going to get to the original thickness of the steel um, that would take a lot more time than I put into it for sure so uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with the way that it turned out after I got all the um, sanding down but see you can already tell that it's, it's blending a lot better um, and just finished up pretty nice I did try a different brand of the similar product um, I think I started with the Permatex steel weld or something and then I think I used like quick steel or something 
anyway they're they're very similar products i think i like the second one better bless you so yeah it's just kind of it's rolling up a little bit there's divots just where it hadn't cured all the way so but this one looks looks pretty okay there was some spots where it ran really thin and didn't actually bond to both sides of the surface so there are those little pinholes um, kind of looks like a vampire fangs in there somebody looking at you but it i think it turned out pretty okay <laughs> um like i've said before I, i'm leaving a lot of these um these i don't even know what you you would call them i just i guess imperfections because this truck ha has lived a lot of life and you know as long as i can fix a lot of the rust holes and it's comfortable and will inhibit some of that rust in the future i'm, I'm pretty okay with that um, that big black streak that's the uh yeah. rust fix yeah look at that movie magic you see it here for first folks and then on this side, you can also see on that where that black line was, there's just so much pitting. Um, I'm not going to leave that there. I'm going to use some glazing putty. And that's kind of my my biggest um, amount of body work, I guess, is just the glazing putty. Because I'm trying not to make this thing a Bondo cage and just have quarter-inch thick paint. You know, it it's, it's not going to be looking super pretty, but with... The filler with the the glaze and with um, high fill primer, a lot of the imperfections that are inevitably going to be there uh, should go away for the final coat here. But that's the glazing putty. It hardens super thin and makes everything look pretty. And with this stuff, you you kind of have to keep things consistent when you're bringing it down otherwise it has these peaks Look at that. magic so <laughs> kind of the same situation here with the glazing putty it just didn't uh just didn't care all the way so you know that's that's not the greatest but it definitely could have been a lot worse so just cleaning it up cleaning it up as you do so so this side just some some light sanding make everything a little bit more even you can kind of start to see the dimples pop out a little bit more but they're definitely a lot smoother than they were um, we took the radio antenna off finally and got that all cleaned up so it's it's pretty smooth but yeah there's the dimples there they're pre pretty glaring <laughs> so but I think the, the I felt primer actually filled it pretty well, made it nice and even. So. Can't be too mad at that. So yeah, just more sanding, more sanding, more sanding. <laughs> that's kind of at this stage. That's what you got, and see it. It's it's almost invisible. So. You know, there's there's some little ones there, but how much time are you going to spend on just fixing those little divots? I think that's going to add character to it. You know, there is that that element of cheapness, I guess, but I I just don't see the point in uh, taking away little bits of its history. And in this area, you know, this is somewhere that was receiving abuse all the time this is where all the slush rocks anything came up and hit and was right on the seam of the fenders as well so it's it is what it is
So with this stuff, you really want to feather the edges in and kind of gradually raise it because you know you're going to have some height difference. It's not going to be a whole hell of a lot, but it's it's more. It's, it's a difference in height. So you want to kind of create a ramp where it transitions nice and clean and smooth um, so that it seems like it's all one texture. So there's some more body filler for this side. Just trying to make everything a little bit more even. This is one of those 25 feet away trucks. <laughs> I think it's gonna it'll look like a show truck from about 25 feet away. <laughs> um, I'm I'm just looking for something that is is gonna be fairly enjoyable, reliable. Um, I don't really care about the chrome billet stuff. A lot of it's gonna just be just like this something that I did myself so hopefully it turns out better than uh, I think it might so you see that high fill primer it, it does bring a lot of those um, issues to the surface so I'm just coming down and smoothing everything out so where there's primer missing that means there was an issue so not too bad for a first time over this side I think and I think my favorite part is that any surface that hasn't been fixed yet is a um, paint test surface because <laughs> that paint's coming off either way so that's that's pretty nice and convenient um, you might also notice in this hole there's some other stuff so that's a like a cork gasket material that was um, bonded to it and I pulled a lot of that out but it, it's something to worry about later on <laughs> when I'm doing the interior but yeah, pretty, pretty uh, good coating, in my opinion. It's gonna be um, nice, safe, safe amount, and hopefully it won't get too many dings and rock chips down the road. But yeah, it's it's just a thin steel, you know, made back in the way we used to make it. It's not super pretty and robotically welded and stamped and riveted. This was made by people. So now we're moving on to the front. We actually flipped the um, the truck over, so it's actually sitting on its floor now. And we just have to get this this thing cleaned up. And so, you know, with the firewall, there's just so many different shapes and connections that you have to go around and plug and just avoid destroying because it's <laughs> some of this stuff it's hard to find like those uh radiator um not radiator firewall grommets those rubber ones it's just it's rough but you know you just gotta take things off or in my case just use some painter's tape cover them up call it a day so this part of it with the cowl is is going to be um black so this is like a rust fixed black with undercoating so I'm just getting in and putting it in the and trying to <laughs> work on it. Of course we got some people who think they're funny sticking their hands all up in the camera but you know. So here's the wax and greaser remover after cutting down a lot of the high spots and for this it's it's getting rust fixed, primed with the black stuff, and then I, I think I'm gonna do some undercoating on it. I think I already I did put a layer on it, yeah. But it, you know, it's it's gonna be the front. It's gonna be behind the engine, so hopefully the engine looks pretty enough so that you don't look too close at this paint job here. But um, it got it got done. So I was doing a lot of of additional rust removal there and I kind of thought to myself well I should probably you know paint this armature by itself and get it done nice and neat but I don't think I really needed to do that <laughs> it's it's all going to be black anyway so um, you should have just painted it all at once but this this one arm I decided I, I yeah I'm gonna tape it off and bag it and make it pretty so Oh yeah, this is some high quality tape work here. Just, you know, 
Da Vinci level tape work, if I'm completely 100% humble and honest. So there I go with the, <laughs> the tape. Uh, I wasted a lot of time there taping that off, but, you know, it kind of is what it is. Look at that, it looks nice and pretty, but it's all getting painted that color. Spoiler alert. So yeah, just tape, 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 tape. Um, I, I'm hoping that when everything's all put together nice and neat, I'm still working out some, some of the details in my brain about uh, how exactly I'm going to have the, the hood set up because, you know, I've Everything else I'm doing, you know, is just cheating it all and going through here and hitting it with rough spots and rust fix and then hitting it with an undercoating. And so what's kind of different about the front end is I want to build a support for the hood and then not have the fenders on. And so if you're not having the fenders on, then you can't have the front same front grill. And if you don't have the same front grill, you can't you use the hood latch. So... I'm thinking I'm gonna try and reach out to somebody and say, hey, you know, can you make me something up to do this and you know have the high boy lights on the side and just just try something out. But yep, there we go. See, black paint. But I guess to my credit, I, I did paint off the sides a little bit and uh, get everything taped up so it didn't fly too far away but I'm kind of missing this weather now it's nice t-shirt weather have the garage door open with the sun shining in and letting everything air out, air out. so now you're playing uh, fire loads with having the garage closed with all the aerosol um, just working out but hey thanks for coming and watching that's the newest update uh, I've been working a lot more on it and Hope to see you soon.